52. Mm. Both of them 52. Yeah. Mm. My youngest brother mm -hmm. and my youngest sister both died with mm. cancer. Mm. My oldest brother and my oldest sister died by accident. Mm. Mm. Uh, the sister got burned to death. Oh, dear. And the brother, they said the br uh, bus, wind bus run over him, but mm. it did not. It hit him mm. in the ear. There mm. was three of the men, and the only witness to it was uh, an old colored woman. She said, when, when they looked, and she said, one of the men said, look out. And she said, one, the one in the middle jumped. Well, the the two persons jumped in, inside, but Mr. Smith jumped over the ditch, mm -hmm. you know, went over mm -hmm. the highway. Mm -hmm. She's in, she's bedridden, is she? No, she's going to buy groceries now. Ah, that's it. No, she goes yeah. to church. A lot of times, uh, I mean, she used to wouldn't go because she is afraid she might. Oh yes, sure. Fill up. How how old is she? She's eighty. Eighty. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. She's eighty-one because yeah. I'm I'm yeah. eighty-four. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling. There's more difference in mine and her age mm -hmm. than there are in mm -hmm. the rest of them. Well, what what we could do next Thursday? We're coming back. Mm -hmm. What we could do is to bring them. Well, yeah. Might be Friday. Okay, next Friday probably. We could come and show you and your sister. We'll bring a machine, you see, with us. Mm -hmm. And we could show you the pictures and, and get you to identify these people. Could we do that? I think I could. All right. I think I could identify them too mm -hmm. because I know lots of their names. Mm -hmm. There's Maud Granger and uh, her sister. Her sister, well, they're both, all three of the mm -hmm. Granger. Mm -hmm. Girls are dead now. Then I know who. The Horton girls. Sure. One of them's in a nursing home down here in LaGrange. Is that Olivia? No, Olivia lives over here. Um, I believe it's some ball. Oh, Avenue. But I named her on the Sunday school picture, and she, that's how come she married. Where does Olivia live? I believe she's on ball. Ball. If I could think about who she married, we'd look it up in the telephone book. Hey, there were four girls, right? And there's three of them up there. That are still living. No, three of them in the on the. Uh, one of them, one of them took care of the sick. Till last year, she's in a nursing home in Lagrange, but she don't need to be down there. I'm more ready for a nursing home she's than a, that Horton girl. She's in good shape. That's what what's her, and what's her name? The one in the nursing home. Yeah. Well, she married her. Well, I just forgot, yeah. but I remembered. There April. was Olivia. Olivia married Richard Kramer. Her name is Kramer. Richard Kramer. Mm-hmm. But he's dead. So that would be Olivia Kramer on Ball Street. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see if you can find it. <laughs> Telephone. <button. laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm saying? One man had five ch children. Hmm. But now, back in my early remembrance, we had to bunk up. But not that bad, because he just had two rooms. You had to have a kitchen. And there's one man had, and when we bought them these houses, they were still two families, you know, mm -hmm. in the sixes and the fours. See, they got one six down there, well, on each end of it. The rest of them four room houses mm -hmm. across the street from me. And one family lived over there with five children. And you had how many in your family? Eleven. 
but now my oldest niece has 10. You know, I told you he mm -hmm. had eight yeah. children. Well, the oldest one has 10 and the youngest one has 10. But I got news for you. She didn't have a four room with 10 children. Mm -hmm. And you had, in your house then, you had to move from one house to the other. We had to take this house mm -hmm. instead of moving back. See, we had just on the layoff. Mm -hmm. our, our record wasn't broke. But Unirawa had bought it. I mean, that's when Unirawa took mm -hmm. over. It was Callaway. Mm -hmm. When we first come here, it was New England Southern. Mm -hmm. And Callaway bought both mills. Mm -hmm. And well, that's when we was on short time. But when, after you got back from Fort McPherson, how did you get back into working well, in the mills? Well, we were working with Unirol. It's already U.S. rubber. Mm -hmm. How did you get back into the mill then? We just went back to work like we always did. They didn't penalize you for mm -mm. No, but Leon, the sister of mine out here, we had to rest a day a week. And... Uh, Every time I asked Leon if she wanted to rest, she'd tell him, yeah, Papa got on to her. You can't afford, I don't know why you rest twice a week. She said, well, Papa, they ask you if you want to rest, and I'm not going to lie to her. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like she's a woman with a lot of spirit. <laughs> but Ruby, uh, family down here that wouldn't join the union, Ruby McCurry asked when they was going to send me out to rest. I mean, when they was going to send her out to rest one day. She pointed her finger at me and she said, you mean you going to let that Ed Maison belong, uh, belong to the union work and send me out? <laughs> I didn't pay no attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's over with. How did, uh, how were your sister's eyes? Well, she had cataract on one and had it removed and uh -huh. she's got, well, she's got cataract. She's supposed to have surgery in February on the other uh -huh. eye, but she's got fluid behind the eye. Uh -huh. But I didn't tell Dr. Morgan that I went anywhere except Emory mm -hmm. until last time I was down there. He does a workup. He calls it a workup on my eyes once mm -hmm. a year. But I did go to Oplaca and I went down there to see if I could wear cataract glasses. Mm -hmm. But instead, to do is bring the machine and get you and your sister together and show that you this material and get you to identify it. Could we do that? Yeah. Okay. Now, should it be here or at her house? Well, I tell you, my television, she's got two good televisions. Mm -hmm. I got two, but that little black and white. Mm -hmm. No, then we should do it over her house. Do we have But her Leona house? has a good television. Yeah. We, better, see, hey. we better get uh, her, her address then. Hunter Dixon Street. Now coming from Green Avenue, which is just want to, want to make very sure we get that. One Hundred Dixon Street. Her last name is Leonor Palm. Spell that, please. P A R H A M. P A R H A M. And she has a daughter that married a Palm, and you just <laughs> left out the H. <laughs> P A R H A M. Okay, and it's one oh. One of, I mean, it's 100. Okay. And do we have a phone number? 100 Dick, what street? Dickens. Dickens. D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N. Dickinson. Dickinson. That's where we live. Mm -hmm. And the phone number? 637-8688. Um, I just, I just need a little help here. I look up, I looked at Florence Hand Home in here. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't find it. Now, that could be because it's not a residence. It's a Well, you couldn't home. miss it because it's, it's a big... I tell you, 
is right behind the hospital. In fact, you can go on that ramp from the hospital to Florence Hand Home, and you come out on B floor. There's three floors to it. You come out on B floor, but if you go around to the front of the home, which is now this home is in Lagrange. Mm -hmm, it's built onto the hospital. Okay. Which hospital is that? Okay, I mean. Oh, here it is, Florence Hand Home. Oh. Mm -hmm. You see, you didn't probably look in the Lagrange phone book there. Okay. okay. It's. You know that's a big hospital. Eight <coughs> four five. Three two six three. And the address is, two hundred. Medical Drive. Lagrange. Okay, now. Yeah, well, Lagrange is well. Fixed from hospital, heart clinic. Mm-hmm. Now. Nursing home. And you okay. believe that we should? I should try Richard Kramer and see if he's there. And Bell Drake, you believe, is still around? Well, now, Viola Bass is the one that's in the home. Viola, right. Richard Kramer is supposed to be living here. I'm going there and call Lady Collier and ask her. Okay. That would Good. be great. Would you do that? Thank you. Well, give me the number out of that book. Okay. This was a pasture. Well, now, listen, one I talked time. to a man the other day, and he told me, he said, the reason that tree came in by, up in my yard out there, he said this was woods. Yeah, uh, at one time it was, but I remember when it was a pasture. Because I've been living here, around here nearly all my life. <laughs> a friend of mine did when he bought a piece of property. You ready? He went around. Okay. When, when, they first, when she first went to the work in the cotton mill, <laughs> uh, she met the J. Mike Michaels, and uh, he was uh, running warpers in the mill down there, and, and that was in the same department where she worked and I worked too. And I went home to lunch, and she didn't. Uh, if she did, she hurried back anyway. And when I get to go in the door, they'd be standing there courting. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they did that for the... I guess till they got married, I don't know nothing else about, uh, you know, I, I don't even know what time they got you married. You the same man? No. no. We, we was the only couple at the superintendent yeah. who met at the stand and talk. They, they, he wouldn't let nobody else stand in the mill and talk to each other, you know, like that. But this was on the lunch hour, you know. And uh, and when I'd get, I'd go home and eat my lunch and then hurry back to the mill to sit down and rest a little bit before I had to start back to work. And uh, and she, her and him would be standing there at the door talking. <laughs> and and then I, I, they finally got married. I don't know what what time, what year. Uh, did the mill shut down for lunch? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The machinery stopped for lunch. Uh -huh. Forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes, and and the ones that wanted to go home, they could go to the houses, you know, on the village there. And I, we'd always tear out and run. We'd just run like cats and dogs, you know, go and, and eat a swallow over down a hole and chew it that afternoon. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this is important to get on camera. Because you see the big difference when they went over to continuous operation. <laughs> then they had to eat at the machines and all of that. And I mean, and two, with the uh, uh, West Point Pepper Rail body. No, with, I did work for West Point Pepper Rail. But uh, I worked for. Oh, I can't think of that other. And you company. had to keep your work going while you were eating. You couldn't yeah. stop mm -hmm. your work. Well, one one time uh, um, uh, we uh, they cut it down and we had fifteen minutes to eat, fifteen minutes for lunch. Now that's when you swallowed it whole. <laughs> what do you think of what they're doing now? They've got continuous operation, and they're going back to twelve-hour shifts. I don't know. Uh, this William Barnell, he has sold out to Treadgear, and they're gonna lay off between three and four hundred hands. And uh, I guess they work the others to death. It stays there. <laughs> I don't know. I got a niece that works over, and she said she'd probably be one of them. She's 61 years old. They're gonna, they're gonna lay the ones off. It's been there for years too, you know. And she'd been there for a long time. And uh, she said, uh, she's working there now. Mm -hmm. What does she do? 
Don't ask me, because I, I never been in that place. I don't know what the, what kind of work. I think she's in rapping, what they call it or something. I don't know what they rap and what they don't rap. Because <laughs> I don't know all about it over there. But she's been there for years. She might be an interesting person for us to talk to with you. Well, uh, her husband died not long ago, so she wouldn't might not be up to it. I don't know yeah. right now. George, do you know that Amida and... Um, Opal worked in the winding room with the Rainwater Sisters. Ah. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, we sure did. Mm -hmm. Now, Maudine run, worked in the card room. She she run frames in the card room. Cause, uh, uh, but the Mildred and... Mildred. And Maddie. And Ellie. And no. Ellie. Uh, yeah. And Maddie. 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 And Mildred and Maddie. And uh, they had another sister. Named Agnes. Yeah, Agnes. But uh, Bonnie run frames because uh, she was in the card room, you know, where they run the frames, you know. I, you know, may not know what I'm talking about, but anyway, that's what they called it, don't they? But do you remember when they started speeding up the machinery? I don't remember what year, no. But do you remember I, when it happened? I remember when they speeded us up. <laughs> we worked with chicks and whatever. <laughs> we didn't work with our, they'd give us a little, little chick thing, you know. And, and uh, we have these big old boxes, you know, come from the spinning room, you know, whatever, of yarn, and, and uh, they give us a check for every one of them boxes that we run, and we had to make production, you know. You, remember, you don't remember when that happened? No, I can't remember the years. Was it before or after Roosevelt? Yeah, I think it was after. Because Roosevelt cut the hours down, too, you know, whenever he got in, got to be president, he cut down to eight hours, and. And uh, cause I uh, I know before then I worked twelve hours a day. How'd you feel when that, that change came? I felt wonderful. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, what a good feeling it is to get to go home. And we went in eight o'clock in the morning, got off at four in the afternoon. Well, that was wonderful. <laughs> Otherwise, we had to go in at six and be there at six and work till six. Did you have children then? No, I didn't have no children. Period. You didn't take this during those eight-hour days. Once it became eight hours, did you take lunch? Oh yeah, we had fifteen minutes. That's when you had fifteen. Mm -hmm. So the machinery didn't stop. Well, yeah, they they'd stop it for a little uh, fifteen minutes or something like that, that, and that was it. And then we had to get up then and go back. They they had a little horn in the mail, and they would blow that horn while you got up. <laughs> now, did your parents work in the mill? My my daddy did. My, my mama died. She never did work in mail, but she died when I was four years old. But she, uh, we moved there when I was two years old, and, and uh, so she stayed at home and kept house. Did he ever talk about his times in the mill? Not much. He he, he worked in the card room. He laid up his laps and run joy and refresh one thing another like that. Did he come off the farm? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he didn't work it as a child in the mill? No. Mm -hmm. No. We've been, we've been talking with some older women who started working at eight, nine years old. Well, I was about 13 when I first started. That wasn't it illegal? No, no, yeah, uh, and kids could work then, early. I know I know one woman, I, I see, I, uh, she worked out sergeant. She was at only nine years old, and they hired her. But didn't you say you started at 13 because for special reasons? Well, uh, my, see, uh, my, my daddy was, had a hard time making a, a living, you know, but we had quite a few. And some of them got married and different things like that. And then then uh, when I was uh, about 15, uh, 14, 15, somewhere along there, well, uh, uh, they, 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 my sister, they stayed at home and kept us. You know, when my mama died and cooked and whatever, she was working at that time, but she quit the mill to stay home and keep house and keep us and all. Well, then uh, she got married in uh, in June and uh, of 1927. Well, that, that just left me uh, to do the cooking and housework. Well, I had a brother to marry in May, and, and she married in June, and I had another sister that married in August. And uh, so that just left me to... Uh, to cook and, and, and do everything. I had to cook and we had a cow at that time, I had to milk the cow and uh, and then uh, uh, work besides to, to make a living. Because you know, uh, we didn't, uh, like I said, we didn't get no money hardly. When Roosevelt went to, got to be president, we got $10 a, a day, I think it was. Uh, I made that much. Me and my sister-in-law, uh, 
she's dead now too, but uh, we was running winders and I had eight, as we called it, you know, them little six uh, spindles on it, and she had 10, it had six spindles on it, of them. And uh, so she wanted to see who could, we went in on Monday morning, she said, let's see who can make $10 this week. And uh, so uh, we, uh, we told her, I was second hand about it, and uh, he kept up with it. And, and told us every day how much we'd made every day. And at the end of Friday, when just before quitting time, he came over and he says, well, he told me, he says, well, you've won. He says, you've made over $10, and she liked to nickel making $10. <laughs> and she had 10 winers, and I didn't have but eight. <laughs> so I beat her. <laughs> when you had your children, did the doctor deliver your babies? Me? Yes. Uh -huh. I got a baby picture hanging in there. Uh, you might have seen it right over the tel uh, right close to the telephone. That's my husband when he was nine months old. But but I didn't have no yeah. children. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering uh, because I know there were a lot of midwives. Yes, but mm -hmm. uh, and you you know what it, what the price of delivering a baby here was then? It's, but now it's about two thousand dollars. They say twenty five dollars. My first two were twenty five dollars. The doctor brought a nurse with my third one, and it mm -hmm. cost thirty five. Mm -hmm. So my children wanted to be expensive. Mm -hmm. but, oh boy, I've mm -hmm. made a couple of films about maternity. Mm -hmm. and I know how expensive yeah. it would be with the mm -hmm. doctors and mm -hmm. hospitals. Oh, yes. Yeah. But the, one of the funny things was I made a, a film to train doctors. Of, you know, and two or three other things. And that was the only thing. I this could was nine, nine days nine before day, your birth? Nine days after yeah. the birth. You had to stay in bed nine days after. Mm -hmm. You could only eat collard greens and uh, turnip, turnip greens? greens. That was one vegetable. Mm -hmm. And I remember when uh, one time when I, my last, my first baby was born, and I was so hungry. But see, I they wouldn't. I had to stay in bed, and I would just eat what they'd get, bring me. This you know. is this it was strange. How it was interesting, Doctor John Parks, who was later head of the uh, Society of Obstetricians, who was my you know my advisor, mm -hmm. and. Uh, when he heard I was going down to make this film about the midwives, he was put off because I just made this film for him. <laughs> he said, you're going from the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, uh, when I brought back the midwife film and showed it, yeah. the birth scenes. About he, the same thing. Yeah, he said, that delivery is perfect. And when this just barely literate midwife, the black midwife came to Washington, they compared hands. They had hands very much alike, mm -hmm. ah, and he right. carried her around and showed her, just introduced her, just like you know. I like her. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was fascinating. To see oh. that thing. They had so much in common, the two of them. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. nice. It mm -hmm. is. You know, Newland Hospital here has to quit at birthing babies. You have to go to Humana. They don't have any doctors at Newland that uh, does that anymore. That's the insurance business. Well, and it's yeah, some of it is. I tell mm -hmm. you, I think one thing is, is, I haven't heard this, but I have read a lot about it in the paper. I, I, I like to read. I read a lot. A lot of it, I think, is on account of so many young women that are taking drugs, and you know, you if something happens to the baby, they blame the doctor. And there's a suing for malpractice and different things like that. I must say, I was just remarking this morning. I read the the Newman paper mm -hmm. last night. I couldn't believe there was so many drug related. Mm -hmm. The whole sheet of paper almost, and used his paper. I thought that only mm -hmm. happened in New York City. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Washington. It's prevalent know. everywhere, I guess. Isn't it strange? Mm -hmm. It's awful. One of the yeah. worst things in the world. There's more, uh, they claim the accidents, yeah. more accidents caused by alcohol than any other one thing. Mm -hmm. But I know when I was in college, a fourth of the student body was drunk every weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just what you did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was expected of you. Yeah. What, how was alcohol dealt with? I mean, what, what, what place did alcohol have in the mill village? They'd fire you and, and make you move off the village. They, the, the, our superintendent wouldn't have it. And uh, if he found it out, he'd make you move. But I can tell you, the little incident you. where they got the best of the superintendent was that. Yeah. There was one mm -hmm. man there that would drink every weekend. And so he told him, he says, now next, if, next time I hear of you being drunk, you're going to move. He got drunk the next weekend. He went in on Monday morning to work, and he said, have you moved? And he said, yes. Yeah. He said, where did you move to? And he said, I moved in a vacant house right across the street from me. And 
super neat. Got tickled. Said, "Well, I, if, since you got by with that, I'm not even make you move anywhere." <laughs> But you know, we weren't allowed to have dances, and we could have singings and things like that, but no dances on the floors. Uh-uh, well, they said to tear up the, the floors and the buildings, you know, the, there, and it cost yeah. money to have them repaired and things like that, you know. And uh, but that, that when uh, Mr. Wood was his name, and he was a, a superintendent, I mean, that believed in decency mm. with everybody. That place was as clean as Oh yeah, if you didn't keep your place cleaned up, well, he, he he got rid of you that fast. But it's a mess down there now. I said, I told my one of my nephews one time. I said, East Newton is a, a lot of good memories down there. But I said, I sure would hate to have to live there again. <laughs> now. <laughs> you getting tired up? Do you want to go lay down? So you. You like the business that they're looking at, keeping the drunks out and so forth. Oh yeah, uh, my 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 uh, brothers uh, used to drink a little bit, but if they come home, my daddy, oh, he got on to them hot and heavy. He didn't believe in that kind of stuff. Yeah. They were more homebrew there than it was liquor. Uh, well, he, he didn't want them to uh, do nothing like that. He didn't want them to drink nothing that would make them drunk or anything of the sort. No, my daddy, oh. One of my brothers, he was he, the one still living now. He, uh, my dad, I've seen him get on to him hot and heavy uh, uh, several times because he'd come in drinking or something. Other. And he said, no, no more of that stuff. Well, Not my at daddy, my house. Uh, my daddy was a strict uh, prohibitionist, too. Oh, uh, and I never tasted it. Politics mind. was, I mean, whether somebody was wet or dry mm -hmm. determined mm -hmm. his vote. Mm -hmm. Very strict about it. Now I'll tell you another thing. I have, I'm 77 years old. I got my first time to be a patient admitted into the hospital. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We're looking at me so funny. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've been to the emergency room before that, but I've never been. To, uh, oh, they, they had a. Um, a uh, uh, big old tent meeting at Senior Citizen Association from the Humana Hospital over there last year, and uh, there's four or five hundred people over there, and they give prizes, you know, different people. If, if certain things, uh, you know, that they come up with, and I had a, uh, was it a silver dollar? I believe I had a silver dollar in my pocket, and I won a prize for that. <laughs> And then uh, others would win things, you know, yeah. two dollar bills and things like that. It's unusual, you know. Yes. And uh, then uh, the Dr. Davis, uh, he's the administrator of the hospital, and he he said, "Has anybody been here? Uh, this here in this uh, tent? They've had a big old tent straight." Said, uh, "It's never been a patient in the hospital." Well, I raised my hand. He said, "Stand up and come up here," and I went up there. And he said, "You mean?" And he said, "How old are you?" And I told him. He said. And you've never been admitted into a hospital as a patient? I said, no, I worked in them as a nurse, but I've never been admitted. And I got a prize for that. <laughs> well, I was interviewing a 92-year-old. Oh, worked in nursing homes and things like that. And I, I worked in one of the nursing homes over here, and every time I go visit over here on Spring Street, uh, someone was there when I worked there. And they'd, they'd grab me around the neck and they'd say, why don't you come back over here? I said, we had lots of fun when you was over here. You know, that's what they like, old people, you know, they like to have fun. And I used to take care of own food with them. There's a lady over there that I visited that day and she had cold hands, you know, and my niece was with me and she said, oh, you sure have got cold hands. I said, oh, she's in love. And that just tickled her to death. <laughs> uh, Talking about foolishness, hmm. you said before, <clears throat> That you and um, Opal mm. have been foolish ever since you met each other. Yeah. She's foolish when she's born. I just got <laughs> foolish later. <laughs> <laughs> it was contagious. <laughs> you hear it, don't you? <laughs> hey, Tony, tell me a little bit about some of the things that you used to do together in the room. Tell me about the, the atmosphere in the in the room in the winding room. Well, it was good fun. morning. It was fun. Hi. Hey, how are you? Fine. We uh, we we would work and talk, you know, all the time. We could mm. see there was somebody. We just had to peep under the winder. The winder was two parts, one side here, and then there was a frame up here, and then on the other side another person was working. 
and we would look through and talk to each other. All the back and forth. And this deaf and dumb, I told you about working mm. with the deaf and dumb girl. Mary Baker. Uh -huh, Mary mm. Baker. She married Yvonne. And mm. anyway, we could relate to each other. See, you learned to read lips. You didn't mm. hear anything anybody was saying. Uh, too much noise. How loud was it in there? Oh, it was. Uh, like these jet planes, it starts off. <laughs> wow. So you learned to read lips. <laughs> you you've been you've been to the airport and heard these jet planes start off, haven't you? Sure. Well, that's that's, that's about the noise it well, going on. I could Not quite, to the maybe that. Dumb girl, just as well mm. as I could to somebody that could talk, because you know we really we all learn to read lips mm -hmm. to a certain extent, you know, because we you couldn't hear each other. You had to scream at each other to make them understand what you're talking about, something other. Like what was it like when the mill shut down? Well, they went on strike one time, and it was it made you feel terrible. Mm. I was working there. When I, you weren't working there when you went on strike, did you? I was working, but I was expecting a baby. I was I wasn't on the payroll right then, but I well, still. Well, I was, and and I uh, had work. and we all went in to work, and they told us to go home. They're on strike, so uh, we just all went home. <laughs> but it, it didn't last uh, too long, you know. I mean, they didn't stay out too long, but. It went on short time, actually. You learn to do a lot of things, but you have to. It seems <laughs> like to think about it, it was an awfully hard life. But you know, we enjoyed it. it life was life was good to us. We we, we enjoyed it a whole lot better than people do nowadays. At, at least uh, it seems that way, don't it? Do you, Opal? Well. We didn't have everything we wanted, needed either. As far as that, what we didn't have, what we didn't have, we didn't, what we didn't have, we didn't miss because we never had it. Yeah, it, as I had a, f a friend to tell me one time, said, said everybody was in the same boat, mm -hmm. nobody complained about nothing, had, not having nothing, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So that's, I can that's still, it goes. I still say that I'm, I'm really glad I can look back and I'm not. To, I'm not uh, at all ashamed, or I don't feel degraded from living in a cotton mill village because I learned that there are two sides to the track. Oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think it, I think I really, I think I, I like I, I didn't have to get a good education like I would like to have because I, I love I like education. I mean, I love the books. I love anything that concerns education. I think we all should do the very best we can with what we have. But I didn't get a, a, the education that I would like to have had. But I do think that I have really grown in my later years just from doing the things that I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I think it, in a way, I think it hit me. It taught me to appreciate I think if I hadn't lived like I did then, I wouldn't have learned to appreciate things. Well, I know I do. I know I appreciate them. Because I always, uh, I said when I was growing up that I wish I could go into school and been a nurse, you know. And uh, see, I, I did nurse, but I mean, I, I didn't go to school with it because I had my dad in and uh, took care of other people too, you know, and the, uh, my folks and such like. But then when I married and went up north, well, we went to Illinois. They didn't have cotton mills up there. And uh, so I, I said, well, I don't know. So then I found out in a, that we didn't live in this town, but the next town, uh, they was giving uh, lessons. Uh, you could learn to be and go to school and uh, uh, under civil service. See that they would pay you, and you worked on the floor to pay. And uh, you know, I, and uh, I worked Saturdays and Sundays on the floor and went to school five days a week, mm -hmm. and for for six months. Oh boy. That's... And. Uh, and then uh, I worked. Well, I, I couldn't take that climate. I, I worked there a while, but I couldn't take the climate. And then uh, we went, moved on. My husband's mother, like I said, I just told you yesterday sometime, but lived in Massachusetts, and his brothers and sisters. And so we went out there. And um, uh, my husband could work. He worked in the steel mill out there, and I got me a job in the, in a mental institution out there and worked a while. Because uh, to get my license, I, I had to work in a mental institution for three months at least. You know. And so I, I went to that place and worked and then got my license. And I had to go get her out. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even come up there. <laughs> you, see what, you see what I mean? <laughs> she didn't even come to see me while I was up there. <laughs> and 
and then when when I when went started. And, you know, with my life and things, I went in nursing homes and I worked some in the hospital. But I, I would rather work in the nursing home because I love them old people. <laughs> you know, before I asked you, um, you were talking about bosses, and you said that they were favorites. Mm -hmm, they were. Oh, yeah. But I was never a favorite. I don't know about Oprah. <laughs> she was I at one time. I was all of a favorite. <laughs> she, was a, a, she was because the, the superintendent would let her and her, no, I, her that, boyfriend that, talk. <laughs> I won the favor to the bosses, but uh, I, I do say that the superintendent was, I don't know why he, uh, I worked out in the big alley, and you know, I was just a kid, and I went to work 15, and I remember he'd come by, and I'd be stooped over getting up the end, and he'd say, stand up straight, you're going to be a fine looking young lady someday, <laughs> and he just, you know, seemed like, and he and his, he had, his wife and me were real good friends, we'd go off and Ramble in the woods together and do things like this. While your you know. job was running? No, no, no. That would be on Saturdays <laughs> when we didn't have to work. And mm. he always seemed to think a lot of me. And the first story that my and I, and when my husband and me got married, well, he talked to him about it. He was just seemed like it thrilled him for us to get married. And the first store we ever had was rented from them before we ever mm. built our own. But he was. I don't know, it seemed like that he just thought a lot of my husband and a lot of me too. Oh, he never didn't mistreat me, and then I went to school with some of his but kids. She just thought he thought so much of me because he had let us talk. Why yeah. he did that, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He didn't let the others do it, yeah. but he mm -hmm. let us talk. Mm -hmm. well, it sounds like you had a, a very morally strict mill. We did. Uh, we, I was talking to somebody up in North Carolina. I don't think that went on then. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And uh, it's just the only place I've ever heard it yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Mm. I never heard of it for well, all the time, uh, them time years that I worked there. Mm -hmm. And I worked there about, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I guess, That's 20 right. some odd years. I can't remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so, was, were people afraid of their bosses? No. Not that I know you, of. You didn't fear them, but you knew that uh, they, they had authority over you. Respected the authority. I'll say that. Yeah. It's like having a school mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, my, I was taught to respect authority. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just like when when I was nursing, you know, well, we had to respect our supervisor, you know. And uh, uh, one place I worked at, and, uh, boy, you, you went in clean and white every day. We had to wear white all the time from top to head, you know, our caps and everything was white. She had, before we went on the floor to work, she would get us and line us up, and she'd inspect our, everything about us from well, on top of our heads or sold our feet in the, in the home. Well, they'd call the undertaker, you know, that, that you had to put down, you know, uh, on the chart, you know, uh, who you would want, you know, if, if something like that happened. And uh, while that undertaker was coming to the nursing home to pick up the body, we went in and we would bathe them people, put them on clean clothes and all that kind of stuff, you know, and do, do things like that for them. But I was wondering about how, how you handled it with the other patients. Well, we'd uh, draw the curtains and, and uh, shut the doors, get the patients out of the way, you know, where they couldn't see the undertakers come get them and things like that, you know. Uh, they had a certain door they'd come in, and, and if there's any patients anywhere around, we'd put them in a room and shut the door. And half the time, they didn't even know that there, there was a, a, a death there or whatever, you know. I'd, I'd made a couple of films at a
and they under there we had to slide that stool and there was 50 things we had to yeah. take our hands yeah. and grease and mm -hmm. so you know we, sure. need, we needed to have on uh, we used to wear something. pants in the nursing yeah. you know we and asked so, the but I was one that uh, they asked to ask him you, we were you were the one who was asked to ask him to get the overalls mm -hmm. yeah. to put the overalls yeah. on okay <laughs> and now I got it my <laughs> microphone wasn't hooked in okay, okay we'll see you